June 17th work session to order. Uh, have a roll call. District 1. Present. District 2. Present. District 3. Present. District 4. Present. Chairman, I have our invocation by Mr. Porter and our pledge by Mr. Bell. Lord God, our Father, we come to you again this Monday evening and we are thankful for the blessing that you have bestowed upon us individually and as a community, as a nation. We pray that you'll always continue to be with us and walk with us and guide us and direct us every day. We pray for our leaders both locally and nationally that they will look to you for the guidance and the wisdom that they need to make decisions about governing the people that they serve. God, we pray that you'll continue to watch over us, help us and save us. Be with those that need particular care tonight because of the storms and the devastation throughout the nation. Be with them and guide them and comfort them also. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. most likely they've gone out of businesses or taxes that weren't collected off of those businesses that uh, had gone out of business within this tax year. Uh, your errors and assessments have, uh, it was Darren explained to me, that could be several different issues, whether it be a homestead exemption being calculated incorrectly or the number of acres uh, not calculated correctly. There are a number of different errors that could have occurred on that, uh, but those that's the difference uh, in those uh, uh, items that there. And then the third item, the tax and litigation, is uh, bankruptcies, any types of business or ent entities that uh, filed bankruptcy. Uh, that is where those funds uh, are calculated from. Again, this is all state taxes. It has nothing to do with our county dollars. Um, I want to make sure that you understood that. So are there any other questions or comments on this? I'd like to put it on next meeting's agenda so that we can uh, move forward. It's kind of a uh, formality for the commission. Uh, it's law that the commission approved this even though it doesn't really involve our tax dollars. So, any questions or comments? Okay, so if there's no objection, then we'll place this on the agenda next Monday. <coughs> to on. Okay, next item is a resolution regarding the CDBG okay. water project in the Hollywood Fackler area. You have in your packets, and I don't know if you've had time to review this report or not, this is something <coughs> that's done every time a CDBG grant is <coughs> called for. Uh, the commission has to uh, approve this, and as I understand it, this includes part of the County Road 33 area that does not have water, as noted in the Hollywood and Fackler area. Uh, and we'll need to approve this for them to proceed with this, and need to do that at the next meeting if possible. So, any questions or comments on this particular item right now? I think this as I understand this, once you apply for this, no one else can apply for it. Once it's open, correct? Correct. Uh, it's, I believe, a two-year time period. We'll have the application in this year. The project will be done next year. And until it's closed out, you're right, we can't do another CWG project. Is there any more projects looming for CWG grant? No, there, there's one other uh, water project that's being worked on, but it would not go through CDBG due to the income ratio. So as, as far as I know, with the water departments in our county, this is the only one, or the last one, really, uh, last big one. <coughs> they were looking for. There may be some small ones coming up in the future. You know, <coughs> I think we told uh, some of the residents that we don't even buy December. The project would be done? Okay, so maybe they're planning to get done with this. Year. I know they do the, the date back too, though, so that makes sense. Any 
any other questions or comments? Okay. If there's no objection on this, we'll place this on the agenda next Monday night. If you have any questions before, then let me know and we'll try to get with Mr. Hill of the Jackson County Water Shores to answer that. Okay. The final item is uh, regarding a presentation from Amoresco. I believe everybody's had time to kind of look at the presentation over, but we'll go ahead and if you'd like to come forward and make that presentation. All right. I'm Bill Mayer. I'm the account executive for Amoresco here in Alabama. This is Mike Walls. He's our project development engineer. Uh, appreciate you guys letting us show you this. We're going to run through it quick. If there are any questions, just stop us. You all know we're talking about an energy saving performance uh, contracting project in Jackson County. Uh, we came before you a couple of months ago and you gave us permission to do a no cost feasibility study and we just want to come back and report some of our findings. This is the, the rundown of this uh, presentation. We're going to talk about just quickly what is performance contracting. We discussed that before but just to make sure we're all get on the, uh, on the same page, just want to hit the highlights again. We'll talk about what Amoresco can do for the county, uh, the county and what we found doing the opportunity assessment, what Mike found, and then what the next steps forward uh, in, this, in this process are. Uh, just to uh, reiterate, we discussed this before, but energy saving performance contracting is based in state law. There are some other uh, folks, vendors, run around and, and will use the, uh, the term performance contracting, but we just want to uh, make sure you guys understand when Amoresco says performance contracting, that we uh, use the definition that's spelled out, and there's the state law. It's the Guaranteed Energy Cost Savings Act. There's the section number from the Code of Alabama, if you want to look it up. And essentially what it says is that if you choose to work with a qualified energy service company such as Amoresco, that we're able to work with you all to lower your energy and operating costs and we guarantee uh, that the price of the project is covered on an annual basis by the savings generated from the project. In a second we'll talk about what a project might look like. Uh, just a little bit simpler terms using the old uh, pie chart. Uh, before we do a project, this is where you are now. And you've got a budget that includes <coughs> energy cost, and that energy also should include water, so probably better title utility <coughs> cost. And you've got maintenance cost, and every year if you don't do a project, that pie's going to get a little bigger because, you know, utility costs, energy, and water, it's constantly going up. Maintenance, the older the equipment, the older the buildings, the more maintenance required. If you choose to use performance contracting on the right side of the screen, the post-project pie chart shows that we're going to reduce the, the way we guarantee the savings, and this chart is a generic chart, this is not to scale for, for the county, we're going to reduce energy costs, we're going to reduce maintenance costs, and that third piece of the pie, those are the guaranteed savings that will pay for the project. And again, the guarantee is, is ver measured and verified on an annual basis, so it's you don't wait to the end of the contract to realize all the savings. It's guaranteed on an annual basis so that you all are not required to uh, add any additional budget dollars or, or, or raise taxes. Your, your budget is a budget neutral project. Here's just a few bullet points that talk about the difference in using the conventional, uh, conventional procurement method versus using performance contracting. The state of Alabama put performance contracting in place to encourage uh, public sector entities such as municipalities, K-12 schools, universities, etc., to become more um, energy efficient, also help you lower your operating costs, and at the same time upgrade your facilities. Uh, while there's some complications in doing construction projects that hold back municipalities and, and other public sector entities, that's what this, uh, the, the, this law was put in place to help alleviate some of those problems to encourage folks like you to move forward with uh, these types of projects. These are some bullet points that, that spell out the difference. If you use conventional procurement method and you decide that you're going to uh, put in, you know, high efficiency lighting, high efficiency HVAC, and an energy management system, that would be three separate projects, meaning you would have to have it designed three times, develop three scopes, go out for bids three times, negotiate three times, Using PC, it's one, if you use a qualified energy service company such as Amoresco, the state will allow you to do a bundled solution with just one contract with us. Um, all of the other contracts with the vendors and suppliers, 
they would deal with us. You all would just have one contract. Uh, that's bullet number two. I kind of ran over it. Instead of having to manage multiple contracts, you would handle one single contract, and that would be with Amoresco. Conventional procurement, there are no guaranteed savings. While you may have uh, vendors come in and run numbers for you as, as part of uh, you know, the process, uh, they may show you the numbers, but they're not guaranteed. With performance contracting, again, based on state law, we guarantee the savings. So if, if we guarantee that we're going to save you X dollars a year to pay for the project, and we save you less than X, we have to make up that difference. We write a check for less than X, and then we come dig in and try to find out where we went wrong and, and, and make uh, corrections. So it's absolutely guaranteed. Uh, number three. Uh, that was guaranteed. Number four, important, with conventional construction projects, you run into change orders. So uh, that can blow up a project or that can bring a project to a standstill when you hit change orders. It may be outside of your budget, the, the change orders. Performance contracting, the state does not allow the vendor being a, a, an energy service company, we're not allowed to uh, bring change orders to you guys. So you get a lot more due diligence up front from us. If we don't do a good job in designing the project and we find that there were some costs that we didn't account for, that's on us, it's not on you. Uh, just one quick note, no change orders are allowed for, from us to you. On the other hand, though, if we get to the the project and, and you would like to add to the project and you want to initiate a change order, that, that is allowed. It's just we're not allowed to bring change orders to you. Number five is, is another important project. A lot of people say, well, you know, why would we well, why don't we just do this ourselves? If we identify four or five different energy cost-saving measures, why don't we just do them ourselves? Uh, if you do incremental projects, you're losing the savings. We're, we're doing these projects simultaneously, so we're, we're capturing all the savings uh, simultaneously instead of doing projects in a series where, where you're not able to capture all of the savings all at once. If I'm talking too fast, just uh, slow me down. Here's the op uh, opportunity assessment. That's another term for feasibility study. Uh, we're going to talk here quickly about what we looked at here in the county, uh, what your spend is, what potential improvements uh, could be made uh, through one of these projects. And then we're going to talk about the numbers, what savings and uh, program potential would be. Uh, Mike is our project development engineer. He's the guy that had his hands on and, and was out, so I'm going to let him talk about <coughs> The opportunity assessment. Well, a few weeks ago, I walked through each of these buildings uh, to get a feel for the types of uh, energy uh, systems in the buildings. Um, there's nothing terribly unusual uh, about the buildings. Uh, as we move forward, my understanding is that the Academy Annex building is, is being decommissioned, and so we'll, we'll any further project that we try to develop will not include that. Uh, based on land utilities, uh, based on your last two years, uh, September of, of 11 to August of 12, that's uh, the breakdown of utilities of, of those particular buildings. Um, the, the total, interesting enough, is the, the very similar to what you spent four years ago. Uh, however, the natural gas costs have gone down significantly while electricity has gone up. Uh, potential areas that we'll look into more detail uh, if we move on with the uh, detailed energy audit will be lighting retrofits that have been some, some lighting projects done or second generation uh, lighting opportunities that we will look at. There may be some exterior lighting uh, that we can uh, evaluate and, and see if there's some uh, good paybacks there too. Uh, lighting controls are often used uh, in office buildings, uh, central <coughs> where the tenants come and go and uh, leave their lights on. It's a faculty center so it turns them off. <coughs> we'll look at water conservation. Uh, I, uh, the, the pictures that we've got there, I, I really wish I was able to use the picture that I just saw down the hall. Some extremely old uh, plumbing fixtures that uh, we can look at upgrading that uh, use a significant amount less water 
We'll look at energy management systems and controls. Uh, this building in particular has, uh, has some significant needs uh, in, in, in the way of controls. Uh, uh, there, they're not very user friendly either, so we need to help with that issue. Uh, some of them are very simple, like programmable thermostats, like a lot of us have. Uh, other types of improvements uh, in uh, HVAC that we will definitely uh, investigate and hopefully we can improve uh, operating conditions and, and reduce energy. Here at the courthouse with the cooling towers, the air handling units are very old and in bad shape. We look at that carefully. Uh, <clears throat> I can do some free cooling here uh, at, at the courthouse. Um, at the jail, I hope to investigate uh, Equipment there, based on the age of the jail, is starting to get near its end of its useful life and is going to cause uh, some additional maintenance costs for the county uh, in the next few years of replacing these units or, 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 or repairing them. The problem with repairing them is that the units are all R22. Some of you may be familiar with that refrigerant, which has been uh, taken off the acceptable list. It's no longer in production. It has escalated from uh, about $150 for a 30-pound can five years ago to over $600 now, and it's rapidly increasing. All R22 that's out there has to be recycled and reused. Um, the equipment is no longer in production. Um, the new equipment is much higher efficiency and uses another refrigerant called R4 channel. I would assume the county would be replacing those units at the jail when they have to with these newer, this newer equipment, but we can possibly do that as part of this uh, project all at once. Get them on all new basis. Other miscellaneous type uh, energy conservation measures we'll look at are uh, plug load controls that might contribute. should be a fair amount of computers in these buildings that uh, we can putting some occupancy based um, sensors that will shut these uh, equipment down and put it into a switch mode uh, in, in a better fashion than what computers do now. Uh, program potential, this, this first uh, column here is, is what I see very easily done. So the savings of about 13%, which would be about uh, 33, nearly $33,000 a year in savings. Uh, the other columns are or would be goals that we might can reach if once we get into it in detail and the, the detailed energy audit, I'll be able to uh, narrow it down now. Right now this is this is the 13% is what I see as a minimum we can probably do. Uh, it would generate a project uh, of about not quite five hundred thousand dollars self-funded. Uh, you can see if we can save twenty percent it would it might ge uh, generate a project of nearly eight hundred thousand get that much in, in improvement with an energy savings of over $50,000 a year. So that gives you a feel for the range of what I see uh, based on utility bills in my wall. And again, just to emphasize, these numbers at the bottom, 488 over 802, that's the value of improvements that would be made in county facilities and it would be self-funding because we'd be able to capture those savings. So, if all you know all went well, the, the best case scenario we do eight hundred thousand dollars in county improvements without the need for any additional budget dollars. This is just another way of looking at uh, the same figures and it's based on the four hundred and eighty thousand kind of minimum that we think we can do. This is yeah. It's this is a cash flow. When we prepare we move on to a detailed energy audit and we come to you with an energy service agreement. Uh, there will be a, a, a chart like this that will have the size of the actual project. I, I put this together just based on the estimate of 488. Uh, after we develop it, we will have one of these that is, is part of the contract so that you know what your savings are going to be, uh, what other expenses. Uh, the debt services, what MD costs are, how much the annual savings are, and 
this last column out there is net annual cash flow. And we point that out in that the state law requires that that number be zero or positive. In other words, the, the pie chart that he showed at the beginning, the pie stays the same size at all times. It's all things neutral. Or if if we can, we'll, there'll be some positive cash flow, so there'll be this other little piece that just goes to the county. Uh, well, there's just a few other observations that, that Mike made uh, as we looked around. Uh, there's some needs here in the courthouse that uh, we'll have to really dig into to make sure we can recover savings. Um, but there, there's some air handlers in the basement that are very old that, that need replacing. Everybody in this building agrees that the, the cooling and heating is uneven, so that's something we certainly want to look at. Uh, Mike mentioned R22. Uh, R22 is a refrigerant that's in the air condition conditioning units. Uh, that cost is going to escalate. R22 will eventually, there will be a day when you cannot get it, so you will be forced to replace equipment. And even while it's available, just about every day it's out there, it's a little more expensive, so it's a good idea to uh, get rid of it, get rid of the units that require R22 now. It's, it's presently at about $30 a pound, uh, a typical uh, home air conditioner or a small four or five ton unit that you might see somewhere. Uh, has about eight to ten pounds in it, so if you get a leak, it's money. It's money just to go away. I'm going to skip to the bottom of the point uh, real quick. There are yeah, maintenance agreements, if there are any with the uh, county maintaining equipment here, uh, like the HVAC, of course, new equipment requires less maintenance, so you pay less to maintain it. And that's talking about a maintenance agreement, like on uh, recurring maintenance. So. A piece of new equipment, you know, you'd be able to negotiate the price of regular maintenance uh, downward, uh, certainly. And then the third bullet, which would probably be the last one, state law does allow the county uh, to make capital contributions to the project if the county chooses to and it can make the project even larger. And it's a way to leverage your money if you have a budget line item now for capital improvements, HVAC improvements, whatever you know you may may call it, a facilities line item. It's a good way to leverage um, the present value of money by stretching it out over a 15-year project. So that is possible. Uh, we didn't look at that here. We were just looking at the uh, uh, high-level view. So that you know that'd be something that would be negotiated if we move further in the process. And it would be something that you know you all would certainly have to agree to before we did it. Uh, here's the, well, I didn't even know I had the effect of the check mark going in and out. Um, <laughs> it, here, here's the process, uh, uh, performance contracting process. The check mark indicates tonight we're talking to you about the no cost feasibility study. And again, we appreciate you all letting us do the study and come back and talk to you. Our goal from this meeting Mike and I, our goal is to uh, have you guys. If you're, you know, if you're, uh, if you see the value in performance contracting, is to publish an RFP, and that should probably be an RFQ, a request for qualifications. <coughs> what it should be, and I've got a uh, copy of one over here that you know you have to fill in the blanks that you guys are more than welcome to use. Uh, and what that you, you have to when you go out for an RFP for one of these projects again to get the benefits of using performance contracting in lieu of the standard uh, you know, design, bid, build process. You just have to indicate that you are looking for a qualified energy service company to perform an energy service performance contract for you know, Jackson County. Uh, we can provide you with uh, verbiage that's you know, regularly used on these types of projects. After that, you've received the proposals just like you would with any other project. You evaluate the proposals. And then the commission would select an ESCO, ESCO being Energy Service Company partner. And of course, we would hope you would select us. And then beyond that, from steps one through four, there's absolutely no financial um, uh, or no obligation for the county. Uh, we did the feasibility study at no cost. If we leave tonight and you guys don't invite us back here, you're never going to you know, get a bill from us. Publishing the RFP, that cost you nothing. Taking in and evaluating proposals doesn't cost you anything. When you get to step five, the investment grade audit slash project scope development, we ask for a letter of intent at this step. And what the letter of intent says is that if you move forward, and that's what the investment grade audits, where we're going to come in and put hands on equipment. We're going to get down. It's not just walking by. We're going to touch it. We're going to count lights, etc. 
Uh, we're going to bring in uh, subcontractors and get equipment pricing. We're, we're starting to develop the scope here. And if you decide to move forward with the project, the cost of that project development will become a part of the cost of the project, which, again, will be recovered. All costs are recovered through the savings. So, you know, we, we would recover that in the project. That's part of that guaranteed pie. If for some reason you decided not to move forward, uh, we would invoice you for professional services. The, the value of that professional service there for number five it will be agreed upon up front. It wouldn't be us getting our feelings hurt and sending you a $10 million invoice that you wouldn't pay anyway. But we, uh, we agree to the number up front and it's, the, it's very similar to uh, a professional service agreement if you hired an engineering firm to come in to evaluate your building systems or an architecture firm to come in to evaluate your buildings. But the, the, uh, the value of that agreement is, is agreed upon up front. So everybody would know moving forward if, if we decide to stop, we owe Amoresco X dollars. I will tell you uh, that it's a very um, uh, minimal number. It's a break-even number. Amoresco, we are not in business to do investment grade audits. We're in, we're in business to do the bundled construction projects. That's how we make money. So the investment grade audit number is a break-even number for us. That's, uh, that, that is not at all what we get, you know, how we make our money. Beyond that, we bring you, we develop scope of work, we would come to an energy service agreement. The ESA, that is the contract piece of performance contracting. That is the contract. And it spells out in great detail what the scope of work would be. And it spells out in great detail what the financial agreement would be and what to expect. So you sign that, beyond that project implementation, that is, uh, that's us. We take on the role of the general contractor beyond that. So. We do everything from consultant to engineering, project manager, all the way through the process. So I said our goal, step two, would be to get you all to agree to, uh, you know, publish, uh, post an RFP is the next step. This slide is just a few bullet points that uh, kind of a resume. Amoresco, we are an accredited energy service provider, and it's the... Label down at the bottom, the ASCO, that's the National Association of Energy Service Companies, and we hold their highest accreditation. That's the highest level of accreditation they offer, and we hold that. We've done more than $5 billion in these projects since the year 2000, so you all are definitely not going to be guinea pig. We have 63 offices in 34 states. Uh, my office is in Helena, Alabama, which is a suburb of Birmingham. Performance contracting is our only business. It's our core business. It's our only business. We don't manufacture anything, and we don't run service trucks. So th this is what we do. We, we don't do anything else. We're an independent company, which means we offer a lot of flexibility that some of the other vendors in this in this space don't offer. Right there's our website. We've got a lot of information there. And finally, we do appreciate your time. Uh, the several trips we've made up here, we appreciate all your time and your interest. And, if you need me, that's how to get in touch with me. I know I've flew through it and talked about it a couple times. Any questions? Any comments? The, uh, when, at what point do we have an idea of the, the more firm idea of what the project will cost for the savings involved? Will that not be until we have the that, that would be right here. Step five, that's where Mike comes back. The number he threw out, that 13% to 20%, that, that's a fairly good estimate just based on the experience, you know, doing many, many of these. So that's the ballpark you're looking at. It's not going to be, you know, half of that or 10 times that. That's a good ballpark to, you know, wrap your mind around. But right here is where the, uh, the scope is developed. This is where you're developing. In step five, you're actually developing this agreement. Step six is signing the agreement. How long does that process take? A week, two weeks, a month? It, uh, we've been, we've been getting those out in about 60 days. Yeah. 60 days. 60 days. I'll, I'll come back and I'll be going through more great detail. I'll be getting dirty. I'll be sliding through your systems. And as we've discussed with, with you all before, this piece here, uh, we like to co-develop the projects because you all know what your wish list is. You know where your problems are that you need addressing. Uh, we, we have the capability of doing 100%. You know, that's, that's not how we prefer to do it because we don't know your buildings, we don't know your facilities the way you do. 
But uh, in this step, we're going to work with you guys, but usually 60 days is uh, a reasonable expectation for this turnaround. And then when we get to this point where you evaluate the service agreement, you know, that's usually uh, up to a 30-day process. And the reason that's usually 30 days is because you all work in a 30-day cycle with your meetings and, you know, your approval processes. In theory, I can do it faster than that, but like I explained it earlier, we got to get contract subcontractors involved. So that once I develop what I think we need to do in the scope, I walk them through. I come back again, and I walk them through it and get from them pricing from a contractor that says they can do it for that. So there's extra steps there to get real hard numbers. We talked briefly you know, earlier about, you know, our project savings is based over the X amount of years. Is the funding of the proposal uh, got to be done at one time or is this something negotiable to where we can make Two payments, three payments. Well, it's, it's kind payments. of a, a lease purchase arrangement where the finance company puts the money in escrow for us to, as we build things, for us to build to them so we can pay our contractors. And then when we, we do uh, the project complete, substantial completion, everybody signed off on it, then we get our portion of it. We kind of like the last one. And then so the funding stays with us, uh, and, and you're just doing draws. We're doing mm -hmm. draws. We're drawing down just like uh, a general contractor would on. Uh, what on type of length of time to do an upgrade, say the low number, for uh, a what, what kind of time? Do you do? Construction? Probably no more than six months. Because it's just, I mean, it's not that large a project. Uh, it just depends on uh, what kind of. Work. So what subs we're using, obviously the scope and, and the time of year too, when we get it done, uh, it started, always affects it. You know. It's also, hard to change out of board in January. So, so mm -hmm. that's my so. but, but to clarify your answer, uh, maybe I misunderstood uh, over your question. The, the payment, you won't be paying us. This is like you built a house or bought a car, you know. You're, 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 we're going to arrange, and, and we don't do financing. We can bring financial institutes to the table and understand this business model that have done business with us before. We go out for bids to get the best interest rates and terms for you all. You can handle it, and we'll do it for you, you know, show you all the numbers. Uh, we get paid, like Mike said, we get a draw, you know, like a construction project. But then when we get to the end, whatever the, the balance is, the finance company, you know, they're going to pay us. And in your terms, and you know your payments are, are back to them. You're not paying us in chunks. You then go pay them whatever agreement you have: annual payment, semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, you know, whatever you. And this, do. these annual debt payments are made at the end of the year after right. the, the measurement verification for the previous year is verified, and you're satisfied with that. Then you make that, that payment. That's our job. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. Will, uh, you, you said you have a copy of the RFP. If you can get that to us, we'll take a look at that, and then we need to determine what we want to move forward with this. So uh, we'll, we'll look at this and possibly put this on the next meeting agenda if it looks like we want to move forward with it. Agenda. We'll move on to our reports. Mr. Wagner? I don't have any money. Mr. Porter?